Hello guys, so Pest 4 was recently released with pretty revolutionary feature browser testing. In this video I will show you Pest 4 browser testing in action with a lot of examples and what are the things to watch out for when doing browser testing in general. And first let me show you browser testing in action, kind of a teaser for the rest of the video, so this is the code. Visit login, assert see a lot of text, type email password, login and see dashboard. And then I run PHP Artisan test with this specific test and it works in a few seconds passing login test for live wire starter kit of Laravel 12. Now how it works and what are other examples, let's dive into more details. Let me show you a few examples where regular typical tests would not catch the bugs and browser testing will help. So for example, in the Breeze registration form, Laravel Breeze starter kit, we have register blade and we have registration test with two methods. So test that the register page works and test that the user has registered with post request to the submit. And the test successfully passes with two pass tests and four assertions. Now in the blade file, what if someone makes a typo and for example, name is called, I don't know, for example, first name, something like that. Then in the browser, the form still works. There is no error here. And if we relaunch the tests, they still pass. Although clearly this is not the correct name and the registration would actually fail. So this is where browser tests would actually visit the page, fill in the input and then submit and would identify the bug. Another example is about dynamic behavior on the page with JavaScript or Livewire. So what if, for example, in the registration form of Livewire Starter Kit, you need to disable the button of create account until all those are filled in. And you do that. If we open register blade, disabled blade component property, and this is the condition name, email, password, and confirmation which are all live wire properties. So they are all wire model live, wire model password and others. So button is disabled by default, but if we fill in whatever something, it may be not even email, password, whatever, then the button becomes active. So this is not possible to test with regular feature or unit test. You need to actually visit the page, typing the values and then assert that the button is enabled. Historically in Laravel browser testing was covered by Laravel Dusk which was released a long time ago but to be honest it was not reliable. Here's just one comment from this YouTube channel from Maurice when I posted about Pest 4. Dusk was pain and suffering and barely worked for anything complex. So yeah, browser testing in the new Pest 4 is something that would totally replace Dusk for most people. And by the way, if you haven't started testing at all, which becomes crucially important in the world of AI, if you do at least some vibe coding or rely on AI, you do need to have automated tests. So if you haven't started much yet or have not enough practice, I have a course for Laravel 12 for beginners with a lot of both theory and examples. So I will link that course in the description below. To start using browser testing in PEST 4, you need to do Compose require the plugin and also install Playwright, which is actually powering that browser testing feature of PEST. And then here's a quick example. I did PHP Artisan make test and this is the actual code. That's it. Visit homepage and assert C Laravel. So it's not this get, it's actually visit with the browser. And if we launch that test, it should pass because the homepage is Laravel. This is the homepage of Laravel 12 and the text Laravel is visible. But for example, if we change that to Symfony and relaunch that test, it should fail but with interesting debug information, I will show you. First, it will take a bit longer. It's not what second, it will be like six seconds, as you can see. But then look at the error message. Symphony was not found and a screenshot of the page has been saved. So if there is a bug, if there is an error in browser testing, you should go to test browser screenshots and you have a PNG file. Let's close this. So PNG file of what was actually on the screen during that testing. This is probably the biggest power of browser testing. You actually see what your users see in the browser with the scenario that you specified. 
And this is where I get back to the official documentation of PEST, where you would understand now this paragraph. Add those screenshots to your .git ignore so they wouldn't be pushed to the repository. Now let me show you three examples of browser tests with login form of three different starter kits. The official starter kits of Laravel, Livewire, Vue, and React. Do browser tests work in all of them? And look at the code. So this is the login test and this is one of the ways how you set up the things. So for example create a user it could be in the seeds as well and then you visit the login page then you have page object here and then the first assertions is assert C. So all those texts on the form could be seen and asserted if the page contains those texts. But this is the more important part. You can type email, type password, press login, which is this button, and then assert C dashboard. So if I log in with test example, I should be redirected to dashboard and this text will be visible. But if I run the same in the test, will it succeed? Let's try it out. And yeah, in 1.41 seconds, it successfully typed the email and password and logged in. As an example, as a proof that it actually works, for example, let's change login to this. This is, by the way, you need to be really careful with the text. What do you press on? So if we log out, is it sign in? Is it login? Is it two words? Is it one word? If we relaunch that test, it will fail and it will take again longer to perform the screenshot because that login, the thing of press login wouldn't work and the actual error would be timeout exceeded because it didn't actually click because it didn't find the button and then nothing is happening in the browser for five seconds which causes the timeout. So then in the browser you have that login PNG screenshot which would show you that email is correctly filled in, password is filled in, but then nothing happened. So probably something is wrong with press login. And side note, my another advice is start using translations right away. You never know when you need them in the future. Same experiment with Vue Starter Kit and React Starter Kit and I actually copy pasted the same code from Livewire Starter Kit and it failed. So what worked for Livewire didn't work with you in this case and I will show you why. It's kind of ironic. So the error is that forgot your password was not found and then if I look at the browser it's just different text. So in Livewire version is forgot your password, in Vue and React versions it's forgot password without the word your. So since we have three different starter kits, you may find very small differences here and there because there are actually three different repositories. So it's hard for the Core Laravel team to keep them identical word by word. But yeah, this is another example of expected to see text, but it was not found. And I've performed the same test with filament login form and let's see what happens. So this is the login test almost identical, visit admin login, then assert C and then type. In this case, I have to reference the inputs as form dot something because that's filament logic and then press sign in and it didn't work. And let me show you why. So if we launch that PHP artisan test, expected to see dashboard, but it was not found. And let's see what is the screenshot login and the screenshot shows a similar thing and the screenshot shows that email and password are successfully filled in but then sign in button didn't work and a better way to reference the elements is by their IDs and I will talk about that in a few later examples but another alternative is instead of press sign in you just do submit which would submit the first form on the page. And now if we launch that test, as you can see, it passed successfully logged in to the dashboard. So basically experiment after experiment, I uncover what works and what doesn't or what partially works with browser testing based on specific scenario. The main thing is to watch the HTML, what's inside and how to reference specific inputs or elements. Another example of submit button not working in another demo project of Junior CRM, I have create task button which didn't work in this test. So I have tasks crud test with full scenario of login, then I log in, go to tasks create, then fill in the form. It's not just type, it's also select and press submit button was the correct reference. And to be honest, I'm not sure why, but button create task didn't work. So if we try press create 
task, or in fact, now when shooting this video, I realized why, because on the page, create task is also a label here. So it clicks on the first element, which is a label and not on the button create task. So this is another reason to reference the elements like this with ID. And the full test example is basically full scenario of a CRUD. I type, I assert, see the tasks, which means I'm redirected to the table. Then I see that record in the table. Then I get the latest task and expect the result to be in the database. And then I navigate to that tasks edit form. Then again, press submit button after some changes and then assert database changes. So you may go into full scenario of multiple operations at once because partially you would need to log in every time. I try to use acting as instead of this and sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. So if you want to perform multiple operations with the same user, at least in my experiments, it was one sign in and then you navigate to one URL, then navigate to another URL and perform multiple operations since we have the same task to deal with. So it wouldn't make sense to recreate the same thing in a separate test. It would be just longer. So if we launch that test, tasks CRUD test, 30 assertions, success in 1.5 seconds. There are also a few more extra features which makes browser testing even more valuable. For example, debugging. So if you launch PHP Artisan test with debugging, see what happens. Not sure if you noticed, but there were browsers opening, not one, but two of them. But since the test have passed, then those browser windows closed automatically. But now, for example, let's make a typo create tasks. And now let's relaunch the tests and see what happens. So we have those browser windows and this browser window stayed open. This is not Google Chrome, but it's Chromium. It's called Chromium. So you would immediately see in the browser on this URL what happened during your debugging session. So you can switch between the same terminal. So you see the error and you immediately see not the screenshot, but actual browser where you can navigate and see what may have happened. Then press any key to continue and the browser window is closed again. Also, there are other ways to debug like screenshot, tinker and headed. You can experiment with that yourself. It's pretty awesome and amazing on top of the default browser testing. And also related to that Chromium topic, if you want to debug specific issue on specific browser, see the example from the official docs, you can do visit on whatever device. So let's try exactly that in our example. So visit, where's our first visit? Yeah, visit login on mobile Firefox. And then we navigate and we will see the error. Okay, we'll launch the test and we'll see what will launch. As you can see, here's the mobile window. And with this, you would even be able to debug responsive design issues like here, as you can see. And the actual error was that PEST doesn't have Firefox method. So not sure if it's changed since those docs were published or maybe I haven't installed some Firefox plugin or something like that. But basically you can experiment with agents. And finally in this video, I've tried browser testing in GitHub Actions as part of CI CD. So there's GitHub workflows in this testing repository and in tests, which were running even before that, I added a few things related to browser testing. There's a separate section in the documentation of browser testing, what to add into your continuous integration setup. And this is exactly what I did here. And then as a part of the setup, vendor bin pest is run. And this is where we can test how much it would take because it serves a virtual environment before running tests. And in my experiments, you can see so the last test here for last commit for that repository, we can click details and see the results. So set up job. And this is what you need to understand that NPM install playwright takes quite a while. As you can see here, 54 seconds. If you install it locally first, I didn't mention it in the beginning of this video, probably I should have. It installs quite a lot of things, roughly about 300 to 400 megabytes because it basically installs different browsers. So yeah, 315 megs at least, maybe more in some other area of the same terminal command. So yeah, if you run that as a part of your CI CD, give it at least a minute, I think extra for installing the prerequisites for browser testing, but generally it works. So after that all is installed, run tests works well in 
four seconds. To compare with locally on my MacBook Pro, it's faster and maybe it is cached somewhat, but for GitHub Actions, I assume it will be slower and how much slower, it depends on how many tests you have, probably. But this is by definition why browser tests are slower than feature or unit tests because they, well, launch browsers. And this is my kind of final word of warning about browser testing in general. So PEST4 browser tests are much more reliable than Laravel Dusk used to be, but still, some of the things may not work exactly as you expect because your HTML or JavaScript or Livewire code or CSS is not structured well for browser testing. Also, design changes are quite often done compared to backend changes. So if some designer or client or someone decides to change something in HTML, then you need to redo browser tests as well. And as you saw just a minute ago, browser tests are slower. That's why you may actually run some tests specifically. So for example, run only browser tests or run unit and feature tests without browser testing. One of the ways to achieve that is to separate those browser tests with browser folders. So when you run PHP Artisan make test, just do make test browser login test, for example, as a subfolder, and then exclude that subfolder from feature tests and have a separate test suite with specific directory for that. And then you can run vendor bin past with test suite just browser or the other way around. So browser tests are passing now, but then also you can run feature tests, for example, or for example, feature and unit tests together, comma, separated like this. So test suite separation is one way to run just browser tests if you want to. So yeah, what do you guys think about the new browser testing in PEST? Are you as excited as I am? I'm planning to make more experiments with that and probably will publish more practical examples. Not sure if it's on YouTube or as a separate course or a separate premium video, not sure. But do you guys want me to provide more examples? Then maybe provide the scenarios for them and I will try to recreate them in browser testing. We can discuss all of that in the comments below as usual. And another reminder that I have testing in Laravel for beginner scores, which I will update to past four soon because it has past three features, but not past four. So I will update it. Meanwhile, I will put the link to that course in the description below. Everything described in this course will totally work in past four as well. Because with past four, there are no breaking changes. There are just new features on top. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.